When discussing the need for SLS, naysayers will often ask why we don't just use multiple Falcon Heavies. In just a few launches, it can send the same payload as SLS for a fraction of the cost. And the counterargument to this is always, Falcon Heavy can only send 21 metric tons on a translunar injection, while Orion weighs around 26.5 metric tons. As such, you can't use a Falcon Heavy to replace SLS because SLS is the only rocket that can send Orion to the moon. But is that actually true? Some observant critics will point to a presentation NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine made back in 2019 detailing a rocket that could do just that. This rocket was to utilize an expendable Falcon Heavy with an interim cryogenic propulsion stage on top of its second stage and an Orion spacecraft on top of that. A rocket that, for a fraction of the cost of SLS, could send Orion to the moon. Well, there we have it. This is the rocket that can replace SLS, right? Well, hold on just one second, because it's not really that simple. There are four main reasons you couldn't use this vehicle to replace SLS. Sure, on paper this rocket would have the capacity to send Orion to the moon, but off paper you run into some major problems. These problems being Orion, the ICPS, the Falcon Heavy, and the Vulcan Centaur. What do I mean by this? Well, let's start from the top with Orion. The Orion spacecraft has to be integrated onto a launch vehicle, or else it just doesn't launch. That seems pretty obvious and easy to do, but Orion is not capable of being integrated into a horizontal position. For EFT-1, the first flight of Orion, as well as all SLS flights, Orion is integrated with the vehicle in the vertical position. This may not seem like a problem until you realize that Falcon Heavy is integrated horizontally. This is the first major problem that, if left unsolved, will cripple this vehicle's ability to carry out the mission. Now, some people may point out that SpaceX is actually planning on building a vertical integration facility at 39A. Assuming this goes as planned, we could in theory get Orion onto the vehicle. So with this problem solved, we can now move on to the ICPS. Assuming you can get this vehicle built and on the pad, you'll still have a really hard time getting Orion to the moon. Because, as of right now, only the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy use Launch Complex 39A, and both rockets use RP-1 for the fuel of both of their stages. As such, there are no other fuels at that launch site, which turns out to be a real problem when your TLI stage uses liquid hydrogen, not RP-1. As of right now, and since 2011, there has been no liquid hydrogen at Launch Complex 39A. You literally cannot fuel up the ICPS for this mission. But in theory, if NASA really wanted to do this, over the course of several years they could get hydrogen flowing at 39A. So assuming we can get this problem knocked off the list, we can go on to the next problem, that of the Falcon Heavy itself. The Falcon Heavy has two main problems that prevent this from working. The first being the fact that the vehicle is not crew rated and has no plans to be crew rated, and the other being the fact that the vehicle of that size and shape would have a lot of aerodynamic uncertainty. And that massive fairing, of course, is gonna create some kind of shock wave as it goes through max Q, and those shock waves are gonna impact the side boosters on a Falcon Heavy in ways that right now we, we don't even know, which means we gotta go back into wind tunnel testing. For crew rating the vehicle, as it stands now, SpaceX and Elon Musk have both said there are no plans to crew rate the Falcon Heavy at all. But if NASA wanted this to happen, it could probably be done. As for aerodynamics, a lot of testing would have to be undergone to make sure the vehicle would be working properly. Not to mention, a new stage adapter would have to be built to connect the ICPS to the Falcon second stage. This adapter would have to undergo its own stress testing and structural test campaign to make sure it would also work. These two problems are certainly not insurmountable by any means and are mere drops in the bucket compared to the first two problems, but they are still problems nonetheless. But all these problems, as difficult as they may seem, are not showstoppers. So what's the point of this video? Well, there is still one problem remaining. A problem that is impossible to engineer a solution to. The Vulcan Centaur. United Launch Alliance currently has two families of rockets, Atlas and Delta. But both of these rockets are going to be phased out by their next rocket, Vulcan. This is very important because the ICPS is manufactured by ULA, and it uses the same tooling as the Delta Cryogenic second stage. Now when Vulcan replaces Atlas and Delta, it won't just replace the rockets, but the tooling that built those rockets too. Which means, after Artemis 3 and the final flight of the Delta IV Heavy, both in 2024, ULA will no longer be producing any ICPSs. They simply will not keep tooling around for rockets that don't exist and won't be made. It will be replaced by Vulcan tooling. This is the showstopper. Since they are phasing out Delta for Vulcan, they will no longer be producing these stages, which means max you are going to get three launches of this vehicle. In reality, only one. 
because by the time you all the modifications have been made to make this vehicle work, you will likely have already launched Artemis 1 and Artemis 2. This is the real reason this rocket, and thus Falcon Heavy as a whole, will never replace SLS. So, if all of this is true, what was the purpose of Jim Bridenstine's presentation in 2019? Well, the answer is that we've been thinking NASA said one thing when they really said something completely different. The presentation back in 2019 was not a proposal to replace SLS, but a proposal to send Orion to the moon in 2020. This is why the concept could have worked in this context, because it isn't trying to replace SLS at all. The Orion wouldn't be flying crew, so the Falcon Heavy wouldn't need to be crew rated. They would only be using this vehicle once, so they wouldn't need multiple ICPSs. All the problems could have been solved in time and this mission could have launched in some fashion had they chosen to do this. They never chose it however because the whole purpose behind this rocket sending Orion to the moon in 2020, the year after this presentation was made, would not have been achievable. It would require time, it would require cost, and there is risk involved. But it was never a proposal to replace SLS because this proposal simply is not set up to replace SLS at all. I don't want to take away for one second the best option to get us to the lunar orbit as soon as possible is SLS and an Orion with the European Service Module. There is nothing that beats that capability and right now what we are doing is everything possible to accelerate that. As it currently stands, SLS is the only way available to send our astronauts to the moon. There is simply nothing else around that is as capable and as ready as SLS is. SLS will not be replaced anytime soon. You made it to the end of the video. That's epic. If you like this video, you should check out my latest video. It's all about the Constellation program. I had a lot of fun working on that one, and I'm sure you'll like it too. And if you click over here, YouTube will pick a video of mine that it thinks you'll like instead. And if you want to catch my next video, an in-depth look at the Lunar Gateway, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.